What if there was a Minecraft trap so good it couldn't be escaped, even if you knew it was coming? What would a trap like that even look like, and is a trap like that even possible to begin with? Today, I'm going to try and create the deadliest trap in all of Minecraft, and afterwards I'm going to invite two of the deadliest and most untrappable players, Recrap and Parrot, to see if they can survive this trap, or if I have won. This is the best trap in Minecraft. To design the perfect trap, there are two parts we need to consider, the trigger and the mechanism. The trigger is what's in charge of actually detecting when a player is in the area of the trap. These can range anywhere from pressure plates to pufferfish proximity detectors. The mechanism, on the other hand, is what actually kills the player. This can be lava, fall damage, entity cramming, the list is really endless. So let's start with the mechanism for now and later search for a good trigger to pair it with. The most basic killing mechanism is fall damage. If you can somehow get your target to fall down a pit into a deep hole, they'll take an instant half heart per block fallen. So just 24 blocks is already enough to kill a player. But what if they're wearing feather falling? Okay, but what if they're wearing full protection? Alright, but they can just clutch on the side of the pit. Okay, and now we have a pretty decent trap, but if the player happens to have slow falling and elytra or even ender pearls, they can escape this trap pretty easily. A simple pearl throw is enough to completely cancel any fall damage, so this trap just won't do. But what if we trap the bottom of the pit as well? If we cover the bottom of the pit with lava, then even if the player glides their way down or pearls to the bottom, they'll have to deal with this lava fast or they'll get melted. And fire protection, as good as it may be, will only delay the inevitable if if they can't find safety. But what if they're carrying fire resistance? If you drop a player into lava with no armor on hard mode, lava will do two hearts every half second, enough to kill them in just 2.5 seconds. However, a fire resistance potion can be drunk in just 1.6 seconds, and considering the average human reaction time is 0.25 seconds, you have a whole half second to waste before you even have to worry about dying. Now, I doubt that most players actually carry fire resistance in their hotbar, but if you want a trap that works 100% of the time and can kill some of the best Minecraft players even if they know it's coming, then this just won't do. So how about something like the Void? Something that they can protect themselves against. Something more deadly than lava and fall damage. Even if you drop the best Minecraft players into the Void, there's almost nothing they can do to avoid it. It's the perfect trap. Almost. Because there's one fatal flaw. You actually have to get the person into the void. For the entire video, I've been ignoring the third component of every trap. The victim. And these guys aren't just any victims, they're some of the smartest Minecraft players who are always on the lookout for a trap. It's incredibly unlikely that they'll just willingly stand on the block we want them to when there's so many other options. In fact, I doubt they'll even dare to stand on the floor at all without checking underneath for a trap. And this problem applies to all sorts of different mechanisms. Suffocation, drowning, entity cramming. You can obviously increase the radius of the trap, but with pitfalls especially, that just makes them easier to detect. One wrong block mine and the jig is up. Huh, what's this? You should probably do that. So, we need something that doesn't just kill the player in one spot, we need something that can kill the player no matter where they are. Enter explosions. TNT, TNT minecarts, and end crystals are just what we need to kill our target. With the big blast radius that TNT has and the instant explosion time of TNT minecarts, surely we have the perfect trap mechanism. Well, not quite yet. For starters, since Parrot and Wreck will have 30 seconds to grab whatever items they want to avoid the trap, it definitely isn't a stretch to assume they'll grab some protection, and worst case scenario, blast protection. Standing point blank next to a block of TNT and T wearing full blast protection netherite armor takes the damage from instant death to just 3.5 hearts, which definitely isn't enough. Not to mention, there will be at least one layer of blocks separating the target from the TNT, which already lowers the potential damage even further, and the further down we hide the TNT, the less likely it is to kill. TNT and explosions in general do damage based on rays. When a block of TNT explodes, 1,352 rays are sent out from its center and that are responsible for calculating the damage. The more of these rays come in contact with the player, the more damage the blast does. The formula for this looks kind of complicated 
complicated, but in short, the more blocks are between you and the explosion, the less damage it will do. So stuffing our TNT 5 blocks down does make it harder to find, but it also does way less damage. We can increase the damage by substituting the dynamite for an exploding end crystal, but at that point, we might as well use TNT minecarts. TNT minecarts can be crammed very easily into a tight spot, and they get a random boost of damage if they're moving and collide into something. However, since they are entities, too many of them will cause lag, so we do have to be careful. But there's another secret weapon we have in our arsenal that you probably didn't even consider. Moss. As we covered, one of the biggest restrictions is the blocks in the way of the TNT and the victim. Different blocks have different blast resistances, and if our target is separated by air as opposed to obsidian, it makes a big difference on the damage they take. So we need a block with very little blast resistance that will get blown up easily so the player takes the maximum possible damage. The problem is, if we use a block like slime with a blast resistance of zero, it will be obvious to anybody that there is a trap. But here's where the moss comes in. When bone milled, moss has the power to spread and change any overworld block like deep slay or stone into moss, which conveniently has a super low blast resistance. So if we convert the terrain around our victim to moss right before our explosion, it'll be way, way more effective. Obviously, the explosion route isn't perfect, but it's the best shot we've got. There are other methods of killing, like harming arrows and mobs, and why not even summon the warden while we're at it? But to guarantee a death, they just won't do. Arrows are way too easy to detect, and a warden can be outrun. So now that we've got the mechanism down, there's one more step to make the perfect trap. The trigger. The trigger is what activates the trap in the first place, and it's arguably just as important as the mechanism. If the trigger can be easily noticed and disarmed, then the whole trap is invalidated. This immediately rules out pressure plates, levers, buttons, detector rails, and trip wires because they're all way too easy to detect and see coming. Redstone ore triggering some sort of observer isn't that bad of an option though. It's relatively hard to detect and pair it with a moss carpet and it's pretty decent, but pretty decent won't cut it up against the best of the best. To these guys, a moss carpet will stick out like a red subscribe button against a white background. And if I want to preserve whatever dignity I have left after that promotion, redstone ore won't be enough. So, how about proximity detectors? All things considered, these are a pretty good option. A proximity detector works by using a mob to detect when a player is in a certain range. The two most popular designs are pufferfish detectors and cow detectors. A cow detector works by putting a cow really deep underground and waiting for it to move. Because entities will only begin to act if a player was in a 32 block distance of them, we can use the cow movement to determine once our target has entered a certain area. The pufferfish detector uses the same mechanic but on a much smaller scale. By using the puff up action as our trigger, we can detect if the target has entered a nearby area. But while this would definitely work against a normal player, I want to make a trap that can trap you even if you know it's coming. And that starts to expose some of the flaws in these detectors. The cow version, while being pretty much undetectable, isn't a surefire way of detecting a player. Cows take an average of 20 seconds to decide to move move, and this small hesitation can completely ruin the trap if it's time sensitive. The pufferfish detector, while being instant, is much more easily discoverable. Because of its small range, it has to be placed near the surface, and one clever TNT or dig by our targets and the jig is up. So that leaves us with just one option. Skulk sensors. Sound-based detection is undoubtedly the best shot at trapping these players. A skulk sensor can detect a player vibration from up to 9 blocks away, and this vibration can be anything from stepping to breaking a block. By setting up one of these sensors under the kill zone and hooking it up to a bunch of TNT minecarts, we can almost guarantee our targets will have their vibrations picked up and explode. But is that enough? Is this really going to be enough to kill two of the deadliest Minecraft players? What if they wear full blast protection, eat an enchanted golden apple, and cover themselves with obsidian? What if they blow up the radius of the trap from above and completely disarm it? What if they go from below and break the skulk sensor? There's too many variables, too many things that could go wrong. It seems like no matter what I try to do, there's always some way to counter it, some way to disarm, avoid, and even survive the trap. And that's what I thought for three months, and ended up scrapping this video. Could it really be that such a trap, one that could kill the best players even if they knew it was coming, didn't exist? No. There had to be a way. And after three months of thinking, I got it. The trap to end all traps. The perfect trap in all of Minecraft. It's showtime. 
You see that diamond black in the distance? Yeah, I see it. I need you to get it to me. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to grab whatever items you want from creative, and you just need to grab the diamond block. That's it. Let's see, I'll grab that. Um, I don't know what I need. What I'm predicting is that you have some sort of a uh, skulk sensor uh -huh. under there. Oh, frick, what do I need? I don't know what I need. Maybe I get an, uh, an axe. I should maybe get an enchant. Uh, I don't know what I need. I think I'm going to go with a TNT cannon first to try and get rid of whatever you're doing. I'll just get some TNT, maybe, possibly. I should probably get some armor. I also brought experience bottles just so I can get up close, you know, a little trick using experience bottles to mm -hmm. activate the skulk sensors. I don't want to get too close because I definitely feel like you have these like insta kill skulk sensor traps. Why do I feel like there's just a skulk sensor explosion? We are in 119. Ooh. I knew it! Yeah, I knew it! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I Why'd got you... banned! What happened? Why'd they disconnect? You see, while Parrot and Wreck were so focused on avoiding the trap inside Minecraft, they didn't even consider the trap outside Minecraft. In the resource pack I had given them before the recording, I had implanted a Trojan horse, a virus that without them knowing had infiltrated their computers and now gave me full control over their game, trapping their PC itself. Nah, I'm just kidding. What really happened though is much crazier. First, the TNT minecarts. The moment the two got in range of the diamond block, a skulk sensor picked up their vibrations and activated the 10 TNT minecarts I had placed below the ground. But of course, they survived the initial blast. I knew all along such a simple landmine wasn't enough to kill the two deadliest Minecraft players. And that takes into action phase two. Because this skulk sensor didn't just trigger the landmine, it set into place a whole chain reaction. The signal was then intercepted by a chunk bin, which dispensed a shulker box full of books containing so much information that anyone standing in a 32 block radius at any height was immediately kicked from the server. The signal traveled further, broadcasting up a line of skulk sensors all with one purpose. Destroy the chunk. You see, I hadn't chosen this chunk randomly. Before starting the recording, I had gone and removed every piece of bedrock below the deep slate layer, and in their place, I had installed four skulk chunks. Stuffed into small compartments were hundreds of baby zombies, each equipped with leather armor to drop as much XP as possible. When the signal was received, each of the zombies was burned by lava dispensers and died right next to a skulk catalyst. With the hundreds of experience orbs pouring in, the entire chunk began to convert to skulk, reducing its blast resistance from 6 to 0 0.2. The signal also triggered this contraption, which after a set timer placed 492 TNT minecarts and triggered the rails. And in a matter of seconds, all that is left is a gaping hole into the void. The moment the book is destroyed, the water is sucked up by a dispenser and the whole mechanism explodes. The targets can rejoin, but by oh, what then, the... it's too what? late. What? Just like oh, that, no. I missed it's it. done. No. <laughs> That's how the perfect Minecraft trap beats out two of the deadliest Minecraft players. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing. I absolutely love the Death Note OST, but since it is copyrighted, I get no money from this video, so a subscription would be very appreciated. But as always, peace out, have a good one, see you next time.